What's up y'all? Alvin here and today we're talking fly reels and at the end of this video I'm going to show you what you need to do to win this reel. This is one of my trusty old Able Super 8 reels. It's been sitting in the garage for a while so I'm going to just give it to one of you guys. All right let's roll the intro. I tell the good jokes. <laughs> Okay, so what's the deal with fly reels? People ask me all the time, do I really need to buy that expensive, fancy fly reel? Or am I better off with a cheap one since it's just a place to store the line? <laughs> well, the answer is yes and no, depending on what you're doing. So let's break these fly reels down. So first off, let's start with construction. Most of your high-end reels, I'm gonna say, all of your high-end reels are gonna be machined aluminum reels, which means they start off as a solid chunk of aluminum and they're machined down to the proper size and shape, shape being round. <laughs> Fly reels come in all different sizes, but so far I've only seen round ones. That machining process creates a really strong structure because it's basically a solid piece of metal that all the unnecessary parts have just been carved away. So you can get really tight tolerances and just a really strong structure. Less expensive reels can be stamped of hot metal or they can be molded either hot metal or plastic or some other composite material poured into a mold, they cool and then you have your fly reel. The molded reels are gonna be less expensive but definitely way less strong. So I've seen molded reels where, you know, you're fumbling with it, trying to put it together and you drop it, the reel hits the ground and it cracks. Most often, if you drop a machined reel, you may get some dings in it, but usually they don't, they don't crack, they don't bend real easily. So in that regard, that more expensive machined aluminum reel is just gonna be more durable and more than likely last you a lot longer. Like this guy, I've had this reel forever. I've only dropped it a couple of times, so it doesn't really have too many dings. Don't worry about that. But the thing is, I'm not concerned when I'm fumbling around with my reel that I'm gonna drop it and it's gonna be no good anymore. Okay, let's talk about drag systems. There's basically two different drag systems you're gonna see on most fly reels out there. One is a click and paw system, which is just a spring and some type of little mechanism that's going to click against the spool and create a little bit of resistance and that nice clicking sound when you're pulling line off or if a fish is ripping line off the drag. But those systems are typically not going to create a lot of drag. So that's going to be for your lighter weight reels, say maybe four weight and under. Some of the larger salmon reels will still go with the click drag system and that's just kind of a traditional thing. It's really cool. They sound really nice, but if you really need some resistance on that drag, most of your reels nowadays are gonna come with what they call a disc drag system. And there's a lot of different ones. Basically means you've got something round, a disc, <laughs> and you've got something else that's pressing against that disc to create some resistance. So think about your disc brakes on your car. So you've got something round that's spinning here and you've got something round that's here that's not spinning and it basically stops that spool from spinning. The more you crank down on it, the more resistance it creates and the slower that spool is going to want to spin. So if you got a big fish pulling a lot of line off the reel, you really want to be able to crank down on that system to slow that fish down. Now, in reality, most people are never going to need to crank that drag all the way down. <laughs> I have only been in that situation a few times in my life and I've fished quite a bit. So most of the time, these systems are way overkill for what most of us are doing most of the time. But the thing is, it's nice to have it there. The same with the machining process. It just gives you a little bit of peace of mind. You know that you're gonna have it if you need it. And if you never need it, that's fine. Okay, so here's another popular buzzword in modern fly reels and that's a large arbor. People are like, what in the world is a large arbor? <laughs> well, 
Well, the arbor is basically just the center of the reel. So a small arbor would be a small diameter spool versus a large arbor, which is just a larger diameter for the center of the spool. So why do you want a large arbor? Or why do you not want a large arbor? There's a couple of different reasons. The large arbor will do two things for you. One is your fly line is not wrapped around that small diameter at the center of the reel. So it doesn't tend to have as many coils when you pull it off. Now you're gonna put backing on the reel and that's gonna increase the diameter of the arbor. So it's not that much of an issue nowadays. The other thing the large arbor does is it increases the amount of line that you pick up with each turn of the handle. So fly reels are single action, most of them. And that means when you make one revolution of the handle, the spool goes around once. So in order to pick up more line, you just need to make that diameter larger. So every time you make one revolution, it picks up more line. So that's nice if you have a big fish that runs out takes a bunch of line off and then decides to turn around and go the opposite direction and he's coming right at you. You need to reel that line in as quickly as you can. That large arbor just helps you pick up more line. But like I said, if you have backing on your smaller or mid arbor reel, you're also gonna have a larger diameter arbor, which will help you pick up more line. The trade-off is that with the large arbor reel, they have to increase the outside diameter reel because the arbor is larger. So you end up with a much larger diameter reel for the same line size. Usually you're gonna have a shallower spool. So you're gonna to have to be a little bit more careful typically about getting that line on evenly so it doesn't bunch up on one side of the spool or the other. And like I said, it's gonna be a larger reel. So that's why on my lighter lines, I like to have the traditional arbor, the small arbor or mid arbor reel. So I don't have this big old giant reel on this tiny rod. So that's one of the disadvantages of the large arbor reel, just larger diameter spool, larger diameter reel, and a little bit bigger, heavier reel. Okay, so I hope that helped. The reel buying process can be a little bit confusing. You know, it's kind of hard to assess what the reel is really going to do for you when you're in the shop just trying it on rods, basically you just wanna see if it's gonna balance okay, it's not too heavy for your rod, it's not too light for your rod, it holds the line and enough backing. Some of those other things only come into play out there on the water when you're actually catching fish. I hope that helps make the decision-making process a little bit easier. All right, now, let's get to this giveaway thing. <laughs> so this is, like I said earlier, an Able Super 8 reel large arbor reel. I've had this reel for years. It's been sitting in a drawer in my closet forever. So I thought, why don't I just give it away to somebody? It's still got plenty of years of life left in it. So all you got to do to win this reel is subscribe to the channel if you haven't and leave a comment below. And I'm just going to randomly pick somebody out of the comments. I'll contact you, get your address and mail you this reel. Okay. Thanks for watching everybody. Like I always say, good luck on the water and I'll see you next time.